Yo, what's up guys? So today we are gonna see, what if, neglected Naruto met Kaguya and falls in love with her. Part 1, hope you'll enjoy this video. So before we start, go check out the author of this fanfic, Tisweki Kuma 191, link is in the description, and also subscribe to my channel, and like this video. It's my 7th birthday today, you expect it to be a fun day for me, but it's not. I hate it. Ever since I was born I was abused, and neglected by my so-called family. On the day of my birth the village was attacked by the Kairubi, my father the fourth Hokage, sealed the Kairubi into his kids. My younger brother Minna, and my twin sister Naruko, both got the chakra of the Kairubi, while I got the soul. Ever since it was sealed into me, my parents have neglected me, they don't feed me, they don't train me, they abuse me, and so do my siblings, but what's worse, oh all Naruko is my twin, and my parents treat her like an angel, while they treat me like garbage. It's disgusting. As I was walking into my so-called home I saw my family with their friends celebrating Menma, Nuruko, and Mito's birthday. It doesn't make sense why do I get chased around the village, and get tortured, and almost beaten to death while they get to have fun, and throw a party. I just don't understand. Tsunade, and Jiraiyapov. As we watch Minato, and Kashina celebrate Menma, Nuruko, and Mito's birthday. We saw Naruto walk into the house, and walk upstairs without saying anything. They forgot about him again. We both thought, as we were about to go walk upstairs to hand Naruto his presents, we were stopped by Sasuke, and Mito with presents in their hands. Can we come with you? We want to see him. They ask, as we give them a nod. We made our way to the attic, and when we did we knocked on the door, and we didn't get a response, we did the same thing again. So we just walked in after one more knock, Naruto were coming in. Jiraiya said, as he opened the door, and we were greeted with a horrific sight. We saw Naruto on the ground covered in blood, and looked to be barely clinging to life. As we all rushed to him to see if he was alive, we saw that he was just that he was asleep just covered in blood. We tell Sasuke and Mito to leave, as we just stay there, as they leave. Tsunade went to heal Naruto while I wrote on a piece of paper, then I put it on the presents. Then I took out a chakra paper, and it had the Ichiha crest on it. I began to pour chakra into it, then, as I finished, Itachi appeared in a swirl of crows. You needed something Jiraiya, Tsunade. Itachi asked, as Tsunade finished healing Naruto, and wrapping bandages on him, she finally turned to Itachi. Itachi we need a favor. What is it? We want you to keep watch on Naruto until he gets into the academy, can you do that? Itachi nods, as he begins to walk to Naruto. He stares at him then he smiles, he looks so peaceful. Itachi said then he bent down, and taped Naruto's head with two fingers on his forehead, then he vanished, then me, and Tsunade both left Naruto's room quietly. Time skip. Naruto's pov. It's been 5 years since I left my home, and moved in with Sasuke's family. I was grateful for them, they treated me like family, and they like one of their own. I was happy the first time in my whole life I was treated like everyone else, it made me feel happy. But that happiness soon faded away when I heard some shout demon. Let's kill it. When I heard someone shout that I immediately ran, as fast as I could. I ran straight to the Chiha compound, but before I could reach it, I already saw Chunin blocking the way to the compound. I then saw an alleyway, so I ran straight down it so I could get away from the villagers, and ninja, but unfortunately one of the ninjas was a sensory type, and they found me over there. The demon's over here. Before I could even run I was tackled by a chunin, and they started to punch me in the face repeatedly, until the others went to where we were. After beating me non-stop, the villagers stopped, and just when I thought it was over, I tried to run away, but was soon grabbed by the hair, and was slinging it into the wall. I watched in horror, as a ninja soon took out a kunai, and took both of my hands, and put them together, then he stabbed the kunai into my hands. I then shouted out in pain to signal to anyone to help me, but no one did. I began to cry, as I thought that this was the end. The ninja then brought another kunai, and began to bring it to my cheeks, as I began to shake my head no repeatedly, to get the ninja to stop, he took the kunai, and began to slice lines onto my whiskers. Mindscape. But before I could scream I was suddenly pulled into some place that I didn't recognize until I looked around. Then I noticed that I was in a sweater. I then began to walk around then I came across a large cage. Getting a good look at the cage I saw that nothing was in it beside darkness. I then proceeded to walk towards the cage, and when I did, the darkness that was there was no longer there, and it was replaced with a giant fox that had nine tails. Hello? I asked in a low voice trying to get the fox's attention which I succeeded in doing. So you finally came. The fox said, as it began to stand up on all four legs. You the... Kayubi. I know, and don't worry I'm not going to hurt you. Hearing what he said I somewhat calmed down. You're not. Why would I? You did nothing to me, but I did something to you. What did you do? I was sealed into you, and I am sorry for that Naruto. What's your name? What did you say? I won't forgive you unless you tell me your name. This kid he's different. Kurama. My name is Kurama. Nice to meet you Kurama. I said with a smile. Naruto. You want me to help you. What do you mean? You're being tortured out there. 
So I'm asking if you want me to help you. Please. You know that if I do they are going to die. I don't care. Very well. Outside Mindscape. Itachi's Pov. Hearing word that Naruto was being attacked again I quickly rushed to where he was, but before I got to where I was I saw a blast of dark red light being blasted into the sky. This Chakra Kayubi. I quickly rushed to where it was, and when I got there I was surprised. In the alleyway there were bodies everywhere, blood everywhere, but what surprised me the most was that there was a familiar blonde in the middle of the alleyway. As I jumped down from the rooftop where I was I quickly saw that the blonde was Naruto, and he looked like he was on the brink of death. I quickly picked him up, and I shunched into the nearest hospital. Hospital. As I got in the hospital I ran through the hospital to find a doctor. I quickly found a doctor, and I told her what happened, and when she looked to see who was in my arms, her face quickly went from worry to disgust. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to help the demon. She said with disgust in her voice, hearing what she said I angrily flared my shuringen to frighten her, which it did help him or you die. I said, as she quickly took a look at him, and told me what he needed. He needs a blood transfusion, but I quickly cut her I'll do it. I said, making her nod. Time skip. Third person pov. It's been two days since Naruto was brought to the hospital. He was okay, but the doctors were not okay with it. Before Itachi left the hospital he was surprised when he got the news from the doctor, she told him that Naruto would survive. But the doctors that were supposed to be keeping Naruto alive were not happy about this. Hey, help me kill the demon. How? We make it seem like he died from a natural cause. Like poison. But where are we going to get poison from? We can use the Hashirama cells. I heard that before Rachimaru left he did experiments on people with the cells. And all the subjects ended up dead. But where are we going to get them? I know where one of his labs holds it. Okay let's go get it. Time skip. The doctors got back from the lab, and they had the Hashirama cells in a needle, and they started to inject it into Naruto. This should kill the demon for good. But what they didn't know was that Uzumaki's are cousins to the Senjus, and that giving Naruto the cells would only prove useless. Naruto's Pov. Mindscape. Where am I? I looked around, and saw that I am not in the sewer, so where am I? I started to look around in front of me, but when I looked behind me my jaw dropped. Behind me was the earth. I looked around, and only saw stars, and darkness, but when I looked down I saw that the ground was white, so I assumed that I was on the moon. Naruto. Did I just hear someone call my name? Wanting to know what it is I slowly turned around, and when I did, I was met with a jaw dropping view. I saw a beautiful woman, she had white pale eyes, like the snow, she had light pale skin, and she had a very light blue hail that goes all the way past her feet. She had two horns that make look almost like a demon. She had a light red lipstick. She was wearing a yukata that had purple and yellow stripes going down and stopping at her chest. There also at the bottom of the yukata. Getting a good look at her I saw that she looked to be in her mid-twenties, but I could be wrong. Without knowing the woman has been calling my name, but I couldn't hear her due to being put into a trance from her prettiness. Naruto. Hearing her scream my name I quickly snap out of the trance to see the woman crying. For some reason, it pains me to see her like that. Do I know you? I asked trying to start a conversation no. Sadly you don't, but I know who you are, my love. The woman said with a sad smile on her face. My love. What is she talking about? Kurama, do you know what she's talking about? Trying to figure out what is happening I tried to ask Kurama, but he didn't respond. If you are trying to communicate with the fox don't bother. She said what, how does she know that I'm trying to talk to Kurama? How did you know? I asked, trying to get an answer from the woman, I know everything about you, my love. The pale woman said with another sad smile not to sound rude, but who are you, and why do you keep calling me my love? I asked, earning a small smile from the woman. Well to answer your question, my love, I am Kaguyo Sasuki. The goddess of chakra. Kaguyo said with a smile. So she is a goddess. But the creator of chakra at that. Now for the second part. As for the reason, I call you my love. It's simple really. I have fallen in love with you, Naruto Uzumaki. Kaguyo said with a noticeable blush on her face, as she said that she started to move closer to me. Just in seconds our faces were only inches apart which made me blush as well. What do you mean that you fell in love with me? I asked in a surprised tone, making her grow an evil smirk. How about I show you? Kaguya said in a seductive voice. She started to move closer to my face, making me back up a little, but I soon stopped when I was on a wall, which made me confused. It wasn't there before so how is it there now? Now I was stuck and had nowhere to run to because Kaguya was now in front of me with an evil smirk. I'm not going to hurt you, my love. The goddess said, as she moved her head to mine. Only centimeters away I gulped, as she moved closer, but when I closed my eyes I felt something on my lips. It was soft, warming, gentle, it made everything go away. I opened my eyes slowly, and when I did I felt my face heat up, and my heart skipped to beat. In front of me was the goddess of chakra kissing me on the lips. I didn't know what to do. This was my first kiss, and it was not just with anyone it was with the goddess. 
I quickly became nervous, but the nervousness soon vanished when she left my lips, looked me in the eyes, and smiled. Does that answer your question, my love? The goddess asks, I soon fell to the ground, and landed on my back. Finding my expression funny, Kaguya starts to giggle, as she lays down beside me. Kurama. Trying to communicate with the Kairubi for the last time I failed, then I remembered what Kaguya said so I decided to ask. Kaguya saw me as soon as I said that I got a death glare from Kaguya. Just Kaguya, my love. Kaguya said, as she sent me a death glare, making me flinch. Oh okay then. Kaguya can I ask you two questions? I ask, and she responds with a nod. Okay, first question. Why can I not talk to Kurama? I ask with a serious expression. The reason you are unable to communicate with the fox is that you don't have him anymore. The goddess said with a smile, making me confused. What do you mean that I don't have him anymore? I ask with a confused face. The reason that you don't have him anymore is that I have removed him from you. The pale woman said with a smile, as she looked at her love. What do you mean you removed him? That's impossible. If you did, I should be dead. I said in a surprised tone making the goddess giggle don't worry my love I wouldn't let you die from something like that. But you still are Kabi you giggled what do you mean that I'm still I was surprised at what she said. You still have a tailed beast, it's just not the fox. Kabi said, then which one do I have? I asked, making Kabi smile. You have mine, my love. You have the jubi. Kabi said, earning a yell from the Uzumaki. I have the jubi. I asked for a nod from the goddess wood. I screamed don't worry my love, nothing is going to happen to you, at least not from me. The goddess said in a seductive voice, as she whispered into my ear, earning a confused look from her love. Now for your second question my love. Kaguya said. Okay for my final question. Why do you love me? I asked for a serious look from the goddess. Start music here. I sigh the reason that I love you is because the goddess started to tense up. The reason that I love you is because I saw what you went through. Kaguya said, as she started to have tears going down her face. I saw you get tortured by your villagers. And yet you didn't kill them. Even though they caused you so much pain. The goddess said the same thing with your family. They abused you, and neglected you, and yet you still didn't kill them, you just tolerated it. Kaguya said, still having tears coming down her face. I was speechless, and didn't know that she was watching me, and that she saw everything that happened to me. I didn't know what to think. But worst of all I couldn't help the one that I loved. All I could was watch, as you get beaten, and tortured, and abused, and neglected. I couldn't do a single thing. I felt powerless then one night when I saw you almost dead lying in the street. It broke something in me. I felt my heart being stabbed over and over again. I thought I had lost you, and I thought I would never get to meet you or tell you how I feel. The goddess was now on the brink of crying hard, but she was refusing until she heard words she thought she would never hear. I never knew that she went through this. And she didn't have anyone for support. She saw every moment that I spent being tortured, abused, and beaten, but yet she couldn't do anything. And now finally able to have someone to talk to she can finally let it all loose, but she is still refusing to let it all out. Seeing her like this I don't know why, but I have this strange feeling in my chest. It hurts. It feels like my heart is being stabbed over and over again. Is this what Kagi was talking about? Is this the feeling that she had when she saw me almost dead? I don't know what to do, I was never in this situation before, but I should do my best to help. Not knowing what to do I just pulled Kagi into a hug, and I spoke my heart. Kagi makes me happy. I never knew that you cared this much about me, I never knew that you went through something like this. But I know that you're angry and sad, and that's okay, but you don't have to keep caring about those feelings anymore, because now I'll carry those feelings. I said, making Kaguya start to cry a little bit more, until I said what she wanted to hear. Kaguya I, I love you, and I want to marry you. Hearing the words that she wanted to hear, and some unexpected ones to the goddess started to cry heavier. I love you too. And yes I'll marry you. After I helped Kaguya release her pain, I asked her to change the scenery to grassland, and with a tree above us. And when she did, I laid my back on the tree with her in my arms. Hey Kaguya. I asked the goddess what is my love. Kaguya asks with a smile, will I be able to see you again? I asked with a sad smile, making the goddess turn to me. Of course my love. We'll always be together. The goddess said, earning a somewhat happy smile from the blonde. So Kaguya, when I leave this place, how will I see you again? I asked the pale woman to smile, I'm glad you asked for my love. The goddess said, as she started to move out of the blonde's arms, and stand up. If you want to see me you need to do two simple things. Kaguya said with a smile. I started to stand up when she said the first one. First, you need to kiss my hand while kneeling. The goddess said with a blush on her face making the blonde smile at her nervous expression. I did, as she said, and when I did there was nothing that happened which made me confused, but I didn't bother asking about it. Now for the last one you need to repeat after me. Kaguya said, and I replied with a nod. Watashi wa not o shidemasu. Watashi wa not o shidemasu. Watashi wa jiken ga tatsu. Watashi wa jiken ga tatsu. 
Made not to so nai tiny desu. Made not to so nai tiny desu. When we were done repeating, a bright light appeared and blinded us both. After the light died down, I felt hot around my chest. It wasn't painful, but it was hot. What is that? I thought as I lifted up my shirt. When I did, I was shocked at what was there. There was a rabbit tattoo on the right part of my chest. Um, Kagi, what is this? I asked in a somewhat scared voice, making her giggle a bit. It's a rabbit tattoo that shows that we are bonded together. Mind, body, and soul. Kaguya said with a smile, as she came to me, and pulled me into a hug, and I accepted. We both pulled away from the hug, and we stared into each other's eyes, then we both giggled. Then for some reason I started to be surrounded by a light, I looked at my hands, and saw that I was starting to fade away, and I started to panic like anyone else, which made Kaguya laugh, but she stopped laughing, then she kissed me on the lips. Don't worry my love, you are simply waking up. Kaguya said, as she hugged me again. When will I see you again? I asked in a scared tone, don't be scared my love just stay strong. And you'll see me when the time is right. Kaguya said, as she pulled away from the hug. Well until then if we don't see each other for a while I want to give you something. I said, making the goddess tilt her head in confusion, the light started to get brighter, so I made my move. I leaned closer to her face, and she did the same. We both kissed each other, and we enjoyed it, although it didn't last long. I love you Kaguya. I love you, Naruto. Outside Mindscape. As I began to open my eyes slowly I quickly closed them due to the bright lights. But my eyes soon adjusted, and when they did I started to look around to see where I was. The room I was in was white, and there were monitors beside the bed I was on, so I assumed that I'm in hospital. But I wasn't concerned with when I would see Kagi again. I quickly did a sweep around the room, and saw no one in it, so I quickly got dressed, and hopped out the window. I made my way from rooftop to rooftop to avoid the villagers and any shinobi, but when I knew I got close to the Ichiha compound, I jumped off the rooftops and walked on the street. I made my way to the Ichiha compound which was right around the corner, but when I was walking I accidentally bumped into someone, and I didn't know who it was until I saw their hair. It was my mother and my sister. When I bumped into them I didn't even bother looking at them. I quickly apologized and began to walk off until my mother grabbed my shoulder. Hey Naruto, where did you miss dinner last night? Kashina said, I shrugged my shoulder out of her hand, and began to walk away until my sister said, Where are you going, Narunai? Naruko asks, I slowly looked back, my mother and sister both looked directly in my eyes, home. Then I walked in the direction of the Ichiha compound, but was stopped once again by my mother Naruto, how about you walk home with us, since we were already heading home. Kashina said with a smile, that isn't my home. I said with no emotions in my voice, this makes Kashina and Naruko confused. What are you talking about Narunai, you only have one home. Naruko said you're right, I only have one, and that one isn't with you. Now if you'll excuse me. I said, as I began to walk to the Ichiha compound once again. Kashina's pop. As Naruto walks off I look at Naruko who looks confused. Do you know what he was talking about Naruko? I asked no I don't I was going to ask you about that. But did you see his eyes? They were cold blue eyes, and they seemed dull when he was talking to us. Naruko said you're right about that sign Naruko go on ahead, I have to go talk to your father. I said, as Naruko gave me a nod, and walked off. What's wrong with you Naruto? Naruto's pop. After I left my mother and sister, I made my way home with no interruptions which made me happy. As I got to the entrance of the compound I saw a family that I recognized. It was my family, all of them, and it seemed like they were going to visit me. I just stared at them until they noticed me. Naruto they all screamed, and they all rushed to me, and hugged me tightly, which made me unable to breathe, but it wasn't hurting me. Guys I can't breathe. I said, as I struggled to get out of their grip. Oh sorry about that, we just got carried away. Itachi said, as he scratched the back of his head, everyone seemed to be fine, except for mom who was crying. I quickly hugged her to make her stop, mom I'm fine you don't need to worry. I said, as she kept crying, oh my boy you're alive mom said in between sniffles, making me smile. It's okay mom, I'm fine. I said, as I patted her back. Time skip. After I told them that I was okay they asked me if I was physically okay, I told them that I was, and they believed me. I then turned to Sasuke who was just listening, hey Sasuke what's today? I asked him to shoot his eyes open crap Naruto we need to go we're going to be late for graduation. Sasuke said, making us both panic, and we both grabbed our heads, and shook, making everyone laugh. Let's go then what are we waiting for? I screamed, as me, and Sasuke are into the academy. Time skip. Me, and Sasuke both made it in time before Ruka sensei called attendance. Naruto, Sasuke you guys just cut it close I'll let it slide, since you guys are always here first. Now go take a seat. Iruka said, as me and Sasuke both went to the back and took our seats. Okay listen up everyone, today is graduation so, as Iruka was telling us about the graduation test I tuned it out until my name was called. Alright. 
Naruto Yuzu ah sorry about that Naruto your name is close to Naruko's, so I got the two confused anyways Naruto Achiha Yorobi. Naruko said, as I went to where the test was being held. Alright Naruto I need you to perform a henge, a substitution jutsu, and any jutsu that you know. Now go. Naruko said, for my henge I did Madara Chiha, Madara Chiha good. Naruko said, for the substitution I replaced myself with a log, then I did a shadow clone jutsu, I made four clones. Alright shadow clone jutsu. Alright Naruto you pass with 10 tenths, you, and Sasuke tied at the top just like your older brother congratulations. Come collect your headband. Naruko said. I took the black one, and went to the back of the classroom, and went back to where me, and Sasuke were sitting, then Naruko came in. Congratulations on becoming genin. From now on life will be tough, and full of challenges, but I expect you guys to overcome those challenges, and also I am proud of being your teacher. Now I will call out what teams you will be on, and your Jonin sensei. Team 1 after Ruka started to call out teams I fell asleep until Sasuke woke me up. Alright team 7 is Sakura Haruno Menma Namikaz Uzumaki, Naruko Namikaz Uzumaki, Sasuke Chiha, and Naruto Chiha. And your sensei is Kakashi Haddock, and Kashina Uzumaki. Naruko said, then me, and Sasuke both fell asleep because we both knew about Kakashi's tardiness. Time skip. Wake up Naruto Baka. Wake up Sasuke Kyu and Sakura said I swear she's annoying. Both annoyed me, and Sasuke both did the Chiha signature catch first. We both said HN. After saying that my siblings looked at me like they wanted to say something, but they didn't. Naruto Baka you are not an Achiha so don't act like Sasuke. Sakura screamed, I swear she is so annoying, so I decided to make her be quiet by throwing a kunai near her head. Shut up before you die. I said coldly, making her flinch at my words, and just by taking a quick look in her eyes, I could tell that she was afraid, same thing with my siblings. As Sasuke and I were about to go back to sleep, the door opened, and revealed our senses. My first impression is that I don't like any of you. Kakashi said, alright everyone, meet us on the roof in 3 minutes. Kashina said in a singing tone. As everyone was leaving, me and Sasuke just shunched into the roof. How did you guys get up here so fast? Kashina asked in a surprised tone, me and Sasuke just stayed quiet. After waiting for a minute or two everyone finally came to the roof and sat down. Alright everyone now since everyone is up here let's start with introductions. Kakashi said, making Sakura tilt her head, how sensei. Sakura said like your hobbies, dreams, likes, and dislikes. Kakashi explained, how about you go first sensei Sakura said, alright. My name is Kakashi Haddock. Well I like a lot of things, my dislikes. I dislike many things. My hobbies are none of your concern, as for my dream never real why thought about one. Kakashi said, all you told us was your name. Everyone thought. Alright Pinky, you go. Kakashi said. My name is Sakura Haruno. I like looks at Sasuke my hobby is looks at Sasuke my dream looks at Sasuke. Your dislikes. Ino Pig and Naruto Baka. Sakura screamed. Alright. Next Miedo Jr. My name is Menmanamikaz Uzumaki. I like Raymond, my family, and my sisters. My dislikes are my brother. My hobby is spending time with my dad. And my dream is to become Hokage. Menma said. Alright. Kashina the second. My name is Naruko Namikaz Uzumaki. I like Raymond, my family, my sister, and my brother. My dislikes are rapists and arrogant people. My hobby is spending time with my mom. And my dream is to become a strong ninja-like mom. Naruko said with sparkles. Alright. Now for the Ichiha twins. Kakashi said, making Kashina and her kids confused. My name is Sasuke Ichiha. I like my family, training, and hanging out with Naruto. My dislikes are soccer, fangirls. My hobbies are training with Naruto and my older brother. My dream is to become an SSS rank ninja. Sasuke said. Alright. Now the last Ichiha emo. My name is Naruto Ichiha. I like my family, Sasuke, Mido Namikaz Uzumaki, and a certain woman that I have fallen in love with. I said making everyone whiten, even Sasuke, but Kakashi just gives me a nice smile, but I ignore them. My dislikes are Minato Namikaz, Kashina Uzumaki, Menma, and Naruko Namikaz Uzumaki. My hobbies are training with Sasuke and Itachi Nai, and spending time with my family. My dream. Never really thought about it until now. My dream is to become an SSS rank ninja, and to marry the women that I have fallen in love with. I said, making everyone even Kakashi's eyes whiting. They were right then. We'll meet us at training ground 7, and make sure not to eat breakfast. Kakashi said, as the sunshine went away. All that was left was me, Sasuke, Sakura, and my family hey Sasuke-kun, how about you leave Naruto Baka, and go on a date with Emi. Sakura said not knowing she pissed me off, but I didn't show it. Don't you remember what happened when you called him that? It would be best if you stay away from me, and my brother before I do something or worse, I'll let him deal with you. Sasuke said with a not so happy face, making Sakura look at me in fear again. Hey Naruko. What is Sasuke talking about? 
Kashina whispered before you, and Sensei arrived. Sakura woke up both Narunai and Sasuke, and Narunai took a kunai and threw it next to her head, and said shut before you die. Nuriko said while whispering back to Kashina, making her look at me. Right before me and Sasuke were about to leave, Kashina spoke up. Naruto, where are you going? It's time to go home. Kashina said, making me somewhat mad that she keeps doing this. It's annoying. That's what I'm doing, Lady Kashina. I talked about Shunshin until she spoke again. Call me mom. I look at her with my cold blue eyes. I don't see a mom in front of me. All I see is a mother who abused her own son and forgets like it never happened. Now don't bother talking to me unless it's related to a mission or shinobi business. I said, as me and Sasuke Shunshin home. Kashina's pov. What is he talking about? Saying I abused him I would never harm him. How dare he? How dare he talk to his own mother like that? Menma screamed, don't worry Menma, he probably didn't mean it. But I do have a question for you too. I asked. What is it? They both asked. Do you know what Naruto was talking about when he said he fell in love with a woman? I asked. We don't know whether this was the first we heard of this. Nuriko said, okay, well let's go home. Naruto's pov. Hey Naruto. When we were talking about ourselves, you mentioned something about women that you fell in love with. Who were you talking about? Sasuke asks, I don't want to talk about it. It's a sensitive topic. I said okay then. I love you Kaguya. Hey Sasuke, wake up. I said, as I began to shake Sasuke. After 5 minutes of shaking Sasuke he finally wakes up, Ayo hey Naruto. What time is it? I began to grow an evil smirk on my face. It's past noon. I said, as I turned around, and began to giggle a little. Hearing what I said Sasuke shoots up why didn't you wake me up? Naruto we're late. Sasuke shouted, not caring about who was listening. I then turned around to him to show my evil smirk. Don't be so loud Sasuke or you'll wake up everyone else. I said, as I fell onto the ground and laughed, not able to control my breathing, Sasuke just gave me I'll kill you glare which made me stop. Naruto now what time is it? Sasuke asked while starting to get undressed. It's actually noon. I said, which made him turn around slowly. So you're telling me. We miss our genin exams. Sasuke screamed. Calm down Sasuke, remember we have Kakashi so you know he is going to be late no matter what. I said, as I saw that he was able to calm down a bit. Why didn't you say that before? Sasuke asked, it was too good of an opportunity for me not to make you mad, but I am sorry. I said, as I bowed. You are forgiven, but I will get you back for this. Sasuke said, as I did, and he walked down to the kitchen to eat breakfast. Why are you boys still home you should have left 4 hours ago? Mikoto screamed, don't worry Kasan, we have Kakashi as our sensei, so he's going to be late even when we get there now. I said to reassure our mother, Mikio sighed, as she knew that her son was right. Kakashi did have a reputation of being the latest ninja when it came to doing anything. Well sit down then, I already made breakfast. Mikio said, as she slid her two sons their breakfast, when she did she turned to me who was scarfing down the food. I couldn't help it. Her food was the best I have ever tasted. Hey Naruto, your birthday is today, right? Mikito asked, as my facial expression suddenly changed from happy to horrified why yeah it is. Why? I asked, as I turned to her, as I was afraid that she was going to start treating me like my other family. Well I shouldn't be telling you this, but I couldn't resist. Me, and your father have been talking, and we decided to adopt you. Mikito said, as my mood suddenly changed again. I looked at her, and saw that she was smiling. I stood up, and walked towards her slowly, and hugged her tightly, but not to hurt her, and I started to cry. Hey it's okay Naruto, but we're sorry that we didn't do this sooner, we just couldn't think of a way how. Mikio said, I looked at her, and I was going to speak, but before I could she spoke. Well you guys should start heading to the training ground so you guys can take your test. I think Kakashi is already there. Mikio said, as I did, and Sasuke nodded, and left. Time skip. Third person pov. Naruto Baka you're late. Sasuke Khan why are you late, it doesn't matter I'll let it slide Sakura yelled, the blonde and black haired Ichiha both did the catch first for the Ichiha clan HN. They both said, as they headed to a tree, and sat together. Then 3 minutes later Kakashi and Kashina appeared in front of team 7. You. Kakashi said, as he waved his hand, you're late Kakashi Kashina sensei. Sakura yelled, sorry I was lost on the trail of life. Kakashi said with an eyed smile, that doesn't make any sense. Sakura yelled, making Kakashi give her an eye smile. Anyways, time for today's test. You guys will be taking these two bells from me. But if you don't you will be sent back to the academy. Kakashi said, making Sakura confused. Wait sensei there's only four bells, but there's five of us. Sakura said, earning a mind blown from everyone. There's no way this girl is that stupid. They all thought except Sakura. It means that one of us will be sent back while the others stay. Naruto said, earning a nod from Kakashi. He's right Sakura so you guys should get R before he could finish, Menma and Naruko both attacked Kakashi at the same time making the Jonin confused. I didn't say start. A true ninja never waits. 
They both said, earning a nod from their senseis I suppose. Alright start. The two jonins yelled. Both jonins teleported away while the others hid except Naruto and Sasuke. They just sat under a tree and took a nap. Time skip. Naruto's puff. Naruto wakes up. A voice said, I then felt my body be shaped. I start to open my eyes slowly. When they opened I was met with a bright light. Naruto, come on, everyone got beaten so it's just us. The voice said, I turned to see whose voice it was. It was Sasuke's hey Sasuke what happened. Everyone lost so it's just us. Okay. Let's go. Before me and Sasuke could stand up we were met with a red haired woman and a grey haired man in front of us. So you guys just took a nap here while your teammates fought. Kakashi asked and we both gave him a nod. Why? Kakashi asked they would only get in our way. I said as Sasuke gave them a nod. Naruto, don't talk about your siblings like that. Kashina screamed, earning a death glare from me. They. Are. Not. My. Siblings. I said, earning a confused look from my mother. Well, are you guys going to fight us or not? Sasuke asked for a nod from Jonin. Me and Sasuke both stand up and look at each other and nod signaling one on one. We both stared at the Jonin and ran at them. Sasuke's pop. As I ran at Kakashi with a fast speed that caught him off guard I went behind him and took both belts without him noticing then replaced them with rocks. I then used a special jutsu that me and Naruto created. Don't let your enemy get behind you. Hidden leaf finger jutsu. Thousand years of death. I screamed, making Kakashi scared. He tried to move, but it was already too late that I already used it. Now that he's finished I should help Naruto. Now it's his mother he would enjoy this. Naruto's paw. Finally I could fight. After watching Sasuke beat Kakashi couldn't help but smile, I then turned to my mother who was holding her sword that she used during the war. She thinks she is able to hurt me. I think not, and I know the best way to get her. I started walking slowly to her with a fake sad face, and pretended like I was sad. She was confused until she looked at my eyes, and she saw that they were sad and full of pain, but they weren't. As I got closer to her she lowered her sword down and looked at me. I acted like I was going to give her a hug, and she thought that too until I said this. You really think that I would let you touch me again after what you did to me? I don't understand why you had me when all you ever did was torture my life. I said making my mother tense up, she was about to raise her sword, but I punched her hard in the stomach hard. I was about to punch her again, but before I could she jumped backwards thinking that was going to help her, but it didn't. I ran at her with the same speed as Sasuke, and when I reached her I bent down, and let my hands touch the ground. Then I used my hands to push my body forwards, and I lifted up my foot, connected with Kashina, and sent her up into the sky. I then jumped up to where she was in the air, and grabbed the bells, and kicked her in the stomach hard, and teleported away letting her fall. Time skip. Naruto's paw. After getting the bells, and sparring with Kashina, everyone started to come to where everyone was before we started. When Menma and Uruko got here, and saw their precious mother, they quickly looked at me with anger in their eyes, but before they could speak they were silenced by Kakashi. But before Kakashi could speak Kashina woke up, and walked over to the group, and avoided eye contact with me, but she was tackled by Naruko and Menma. So Naruto, Sasuke, what do you two plan on doing? You both got the bells so you decide. Kakashi said. Me and Sasuke both looked at each other and shrugged our shoulders and threw the bells to Sakura who was upset Naruko and Menma who was mad and I let Sasuke end up having the bell. Naruto now everyone has a bell. Do you know what that means don't you? Kakashi asked, I nod. It means I stay on the team. I sat with a void of emotions in my voice and I earned glares from Naruko and Menma who was still mad. Are you that stupid do you honestly think that they would let you stay on the team, you don't even have a bell. Menma yelled, shut up Menma pay attention for once. I'm staying on this team for a multiple of reasons. I said making Menma talk back oh yeah like what. Menma yelled fine I'll tell you. One me and Sasuke cannot be apart because we work better together. Two and this one and the next couple are the most simplest ones and they will prove that you don't pay attention. In case you haven't noticed, me and Sasuke both took out some of the strongest ninjas in the village without a problem and took their bells. 3 we didn't get hit by them. 4 we got the bells on our own. 5 now this one is the most simplest one. Each team consists of 4 people 1 jonin and 3 jenins. Now if I would magically get taken off the team, then I wouldn't be able to go to a different one, because that would make it uneven, and this team is already uneven. Now next time you decide to open your mouth to argue, make sure you know your facts. I said, as I made Kashina, Kakashi, and Menma maze mad. He's lying it must be he's telling the truth Menma. Naruto did take us out, and did get the bells so he was right. Kakashi said, earning a nod from me. And because of that. Kakashi teleported behind me, but I was too slow to respond, and before I knew it I passed out. Third person puff. Kakashi, why would you do that Sasuke yelled, earning a baby giggle from Kakashi. It's a prank, don't worry, and don't untie him, we'll come back in 4 hours. Kakashi said now let's go report to Lord Hokage. Time skip. 
third person pov. That's all that has happened to Hokage-sama. Kakashi said, as he stood before the Hokage and the two Sanin. So Kakashi, where is Naruto? Tsunade asked, wanting to congratulate him on becoming a genin. Kakashi turned around with an eyed smile, I tied him up at the training ground. Kakashi said with an eyed smile you fool. Jiraiya screamed what are you talking about Jiraiya-sama? Kakashi asked, Kakashi, the villagers hate Naruto. Tsunade yelled, as she ran out of the room Anbu with me. Jiraiya yelled, as five Anbu appeared behind Jiraiya, the villagers don't Naruto. They must be exaggerating. Minato thought. Time skip. Naruto's pov. I started to open my eyes, and when I did I saw that I am sitting the training ground, and I tried moving around, but I was tied up I looked down, and saw a note that read Naruto Kakashi said that we will get you in 4 hours, and that this is a prank from Sasuke. I sighed, and just laid back not caring until I heard chattering. I heard that this is the place where the demon trains let's forget, and hope he dies I looked to where it was, and when I did I saw the villagers, and they saw me there he is, I found the demon. No no no. Not again. I thought, as I saw them get closer. When they reached me they took out kunai, and began to smile wickedly. Time to kill the demon. I soon felt a kunai being plunged into my stomach, I began to scream in pain, as another villager took a kunai, and slashed it across my face. I began to feel tears coming down my face along with the blood. The villagers then took another kunai, and started to put demon, and monster into my chest. I then thought that I was going to die, but I didn't want to. But I couldn't do a thing about it. Then it was too late. They took the kunai, and ran it through my heart, causing me to spit out blood. I died. Mindscape. I'm here for you. Is there? Me? I'm Juby. The Juby. Oh you're the one that Kaguya talked about. So she told you. Well you're lucky. Lucky? How? Kaguya never loved anyone until you. She didn't. Nope. So consider yourself lucky. So Naruto I see that you're dead. Yeah it sucks I guess I won't be able to see Kaguya again. You will. How? Simple. I bring you back to life. Do you want that? Yes. Please do. Okay, now when I do you will still be tortured by the villagers unless. I kill them just like Kurama said I know, and I don't care. Very well. So before I go, what's your name? My name? It's Mei. Meiha? It's a beautiful name. Thank you for getting going so you can go see Kaguya. Outside Mindscape. Sasuke's Pov. As we were about to reach the training ground we all sensed intense bloodlust. But before we made it there was a dark purple beam shooting up into the sky. We all reached the training ground, and when we did we were met with a disgusting sight. There was blood everywhere. Heads severed from the bodies. Grass drenched in blood. But there were two people there who were alive. One of them was Naruto who was lying on the ground, and the other one was a pale skinned woman with long light blue hair sitting on her knees, and she said something that made everyone's eyes whiten. I'm home my love. Everyone was confused and disgusted at the scene of blood and who the pale woman was. Who are you? Mikoto yelled in anger, Kaguya then turned to her, and when she did she saw Naruto's adoptive family along with his teammates and some people she didn't want to see. She didn't bother paying attention to all the glares that she was getting, but she did pay attention to the glares she was getting from Naruto's biological family. She was pissed at the fact that they even bothered showing their faces after all this time. She then turned back to Naruto, and smiled, and began to stroke her hand through his blonde spiky hair. She was hoping that he would wake up, she was worried that she wasn't able to be there with Naruto to protect him, but she couldn't. But luck was on her side, she then heard a groan from the blonde to signal that he was waking up. Naruto's pov. What happened? Where am I? That's right, the villagers I killed. I should wake up, and everyone's probably worrying about me. Trying my hardest to open my eyes for what felt like an eternity, I finally succeeded. As my eyes opened I saw someone that I didn't expect to see. It was Kaguya. Kaguya. I asked, receiving a nod from the goddess. I got up extremely fast, and I embraced her with a tight hug. I then started to have some tears go down my face, which confused everyone, even Kakashi, but Sasuke and Kakashi had a thought about who this was. I miss you. I whispered, making Kaguya blush a little, and making her speechless, but she soon responded, I missed you too. She whispered. Cough hearing someone cough I quickly separated from Kaguya, and turned my head, and when I did I was met with my adoptive family, Jiraiya, Tsunade, and my biological family. Hey guys. How long have you been standing there? I asked with a smile, making my adoptive mother speak the whole time. But Naruto, who is this? Mikoto asked, as everyone nodded in agreement, making me blush a little. Well I don't want to talk about it here. We can talk about it at home. I said to make everyone nod, but the Namikaze is confused. Okay, let's go. Naruto said, as he stood up, and gave Kaguya his hand to help her stand up. Everyone began to walk to the Ichiha compound leaving the Namikaze family. The Namikaze started to chase them, but when the Ichiha family walked over the bridge they all shunched into their home. So the Namikaze started to make their way to the Ichiha compound. Time skip. Third person's pov. 
everyone was sitting down in the living room. Mikoto was sitting next to Fuguku, Sasuke was sitting next to Itachi, Jiraiya was standing next to Tsunade, and Naruto was sitting next to Kaguya. Naruto, now is the time to explain who this lady is. Mikoto asked, making Naruto nod. Well first off introductions. Sai well first off I want you guys to meet my fiance. Naruto said, making everyone's eyes whiten, even Kakashi. But Mikoto and Fugaku weren't keeping control of their emotions. What do you mean that she's you finance? You're only 12 years old. Mikoto yelled, making everyone cover their ears, even Kaguya. Calm down. Fugaku screamed, making Mikoto look at him with a confused look. What do you mean calm down Fugaku don't you understand what's going on here? Our son already has a fiance, and he isn't even 16. Mikoto yelled. Mom please calm down please. Naruto said with a calm tone making everyone sigh with gladness that Naruto wasn't screaming. Mikoto then looks towards Naruto how can I calm down Naruto you are talking about having a fiance. Mikoto yelled. Mom please I know that I'm too young to be engaged, but please, she makes me happy. Naruto said, as he looked directly into his black hair mother's black eyes. She takes a couple of seconds before she begins to notice the determination in her son's eyes. Mikoto then starts to smile at her son's sci fine. At least tell us her name. Mikoto said, making Naruto smile. Well this is Kaguya Satsuki. Naruto said, Kaguya then nods her head to Naruto to signal to continue with the introductions Ok Kaguya this is my adoptive family. This is my mother Mikoto Uchiha. The person sitting next to her is my father Fugaku Uchiha. The tall one and short one are my brothers. Sasuke and Itachi Uchiha. And the other two that are standing over there are my godparents, Jiraiya, and standing next to him is Tsunade Senju. Naruto explained. Naruto was about to speak again, but was interrupted when there was a knock at the door. Everyone became quiet because no one knew who it was. I'll get it. Mikoto said, as she stood up, and began to walk to the door. When she got to the door she unlocked it, and opened it, and when she did she was greeted with a smiling Kashina, Minato, Nuruko, Mido, and Menma. She was soon angered at the fact that they dared to show up at her home, but she hid her anger. Mikoto then greeted them with a smile. How can I help you, Kashina? Mikoto asked, well Mikoto, I was wondering if you have seen that lady from the training ground, the one that was with Naruto. Kashina said, making Mikoto even more angry. How dare she? Not even worried about her own son. Thought, but she still kept up her act. No. Sorry I haven't seen her. Why do you ask? Mikoto asked Minato to speak up. The reason that we are looking for her is because we saw her with you, and your family along with Naruto. Minato said. What are you saying? Mikoto asked what I am saying is that we are looking for Naruto. We know that he is here so there is no need in denying that he is not. Minato said using authority in his voice. Sai why do you want him? Mikoto asked slightly, getting angrier, why would we need a reason to see our son? Kashina yelled, at this point Mikoto was pissed your son he is not your son. Mikoto yelled in anger. Naruto's pov. Everyone was talking and laughing in the living room. It was nice to see everyone like this, but these things don't last long. He is not your son. Everyone was confused about what was going on, so was I. We all looked to where the shouting came from, and when we did we saw an unpleasant sight. It was my family. Dad. I looked towards my black-haired father, and saw him looking a little enraged, but I doubt it. Don't worry son, just go upstairs with Kaguya. And Sasuke, Itachi makes sure that they don't go, and do anything, we don't want any blonde little Naruto running around now do we? The Gaku jokes, me, and Kaguya both looked at each other for a quick second, then we looked away while blushing, while Sasuke and Itachi just smiled, and laughed along with Figaku. Well I'm going to go see what your mother is screaming about while you guys head upstairs, and do not interfere. Fugaku said, as he stood up, and began to walk towards the door. So what do you guys want to do I asked I don't know. What about you Sasuke? Itachi asked looking at Sasuke, all he did was shrug his shoulders, I then looked towards Kaguya. What about you Kaguya? I asked, as I looked towards the goddess. I'm okay with anything that you do my love. Kaguya said, as she smiled at me, making me smile back. Well I don't know what to do. I'm out of ideas. I said, as I looked around you are not adopting our son. We all heard someone screaming coming from the door. I looked towards Itachi who looked worried. Hey Itachi, what's wrong? I asked him to look towards me. I don't know little brother. Itachi said, I then stood up, and began walking towards the door. Naruto, what are you doing? Dad said do not interfere. Itachi said, as he stood up I knew what dad said, but they were talking about me, and they said they were going to adopt me, and my biological family doesn't approve, so why not make them? I said making everyone confused except Kabi instead of making her smile. You should let him go, he is going to make things interesting. Kaguya said, as she stood up, and began to walk towards me. But dad said he said to not interfere, but he didn't say that if he was forced to interfere. And besides I'm always going to support my beloved's answer, Kaguya said with a smirk making everyone's face palm, but I smiled. Thanks Kaguya it means a lot. I said, as I blush, and looked away. 
Itachi sighed and shook his head. Fine, go ahead, just don't cause trouble for mom and dad. Itachi said, as he rubbed his nose, making Naruto and Kaguya smile, and walked to the door. Naruto's paw. As me and Kaguya made our way to the door, and as we made our way down the hall I began to tense up. I tried to hide it, but I failed, Kaguya noticed, and when she did she stopped me. What's wrong my love you look afraid. Kaguya said, making me look at her. You notice uh? Well I am a little bit scared, but I'm not. I said, you're not. Kaguya asked while tilting her head, yeah I'm not. I said why? Kaguya asked. I looked at her, and gave her a gentle smile, and looked her in the eyes yeah I'm not it's because I have you. I said, making her smile, and blush. Both me, and her just stare at each other, and then we move our heads closer to each other, and before we both knew it. We kissed. I felt her nice warm gentle, soft lips. We kept kissing for the next couple of seconds before I felt something in my mouth. It felt warm, and wet. I was so confused until it came to my mind. It was her tongue. It made me feel safe. It was like that time when we first met when she kissed me. It felt nice. We soon separated to breathe. When we did we looked at each other, and blushed. I love you, Naruto. Kaguya said with a slight blush on her face, making me smile. I love you too, Kaguya. I said, as we both smiled at each other, and laughed, then made our way to the door where we saw my mom, and dad having a full-on argument with my biological family, which made me happy that they wanted to keep me. As soon as me, and Kaguya made our way to the door I was bombarded. Naruto what are you doing here Mikoto asked Fugaku to turn around, and make the Namikazes turn their attention to me, and Kaguya. Naruto, why are you here? I thought I told you, and everyone, not to come here. Fugaku said well you said not to interfere, but you said nothing about being forced to interfere. I said, as Fugaku looked surprised at my answer. Who are you, and why are you next to my son? Minato yelled to Kaguya who just stood next to me with a normal facial expression. Kaguya didn't answer him, but I could tell she was angry. I didn't even bother answering my parents, but I did talk to my adoptive parents or soon to be. So mom, dad. I said, what? Making Kashina, Minato, Mikoto, and Fugaku speak at the same time. They all responded, I didn't respond to Kashina or Minato. When are we going to file the adoption papers? I asked making Mikoto, and Fugaku smile while Kashina and Minato were mad. Naruto why are you asking them about adoption papers when your family is already here in front of you? Kashina yelled, making me turn to her. Hmm? What do you mean Lady Kashina? My family is right in front of you, and in the other room. I said, making Kashina and Minato confused, Naruto, don't use honorifics on your mother. Minato said, making me turn to him, what do you mean Lord Fourth, Lady Kashina isn't my mother. I said making Kashina look devastated anyways mom, dad like I was saying. When are we going to get the adoption papers? I asked for both Naruko and Menma to speak up. How dare you talk like that to your own mother and father. Menma screamed, making me turn to him and stare at him like I was going to kill him. What are you talking about? They are not my parents. I said hiding my anger how dare you. They are your parents. Don't treat them like that. Menma yelled as he tried to rush at me but was soon grabbed by Minato I'll kill that bastard. Menma screamed. Naruto let's go, we're going home. Minato said, as he began to reach for my arm. But I quickly deflected his hand. Don't touch me. I said, making Menma scream how dare you. Menma yelled. Naruko who's been quiet this whole time finally speaks up Narunai, why are you like this? Naruko asked with tears going down her face. I turned to her. Why? It's simple really. I don't want to be with an abusive family that's why. I said with a straight face. But I soon got an idea. Okay how about this? If you guys can beat me in a fight then I will go back to your family. But if I win I stay with my family, and they get to adopt me. I said getting an evil look from Menma. So do we have a deal? Third person Pov. Everyone looked surprised at the blonde statement. The Namikaze's twins were somewhat confident, but that confidence wouldn't help them. We have a deal. You have one week, be in the middle of the Chiha compound at 3 o'clock. Minato said, earning a sadistic smile from his son not knowing that he had signed his kid's death warrant. Alright, then you guys better hurry up, and start training because if you don't I will kill you. Naruto said, as he began to walk back with Kagi following in pursuit. Naruto's paw. As me and Kagi made our way upstairs to my room I opened the door, and let her go in first before I went in. After Kagi walked in I closed the door behind me for privacy. I began to walk over to my bed, and when I reached it, I sat down, and padded next to me to signal Kagi to sit down. When she sat down I started to feel my face heat up, but it soon cooled down am I gonna win? I thought. While I was trying to figure out if I was going to win I soon felt something on my hand. Looking at where my hand is, I saw that Kaguya's hand was on top of mine. When I looked at her, I saw that she was blushing too. Hey Kaguya, do you think I'm going to win? I asked the goddess to look at me with a smile. Why do you ask? Kaguya asks well it's just that I haven't trained in using Mei's power, while the Namikaze is trained in using Kurama's power. Naruto said with a saddened smile. 
Kaguya, noticing the smile, decides to help Naruto by hugging him from behind. When she moved to Naruto and hugged him from behind, he felt her breasts touching his back, making him jump. K. Kaguya, what are you doing? Naruto asked in a surprised tone, making the goddess grow an evil smirk. What? Am I not allowed to hug you? How about a kiss? Kaguya asked the blonde to get out of her hug and turn around to her. What are you saying? Before Naruto could finish talking, he was interrupted by Kaguya placing her lips on his, making Naruto's eyes whiten, but he soon did the same. They soon parted away from the kiss and looked into each other's eyes. Naruto-kun, you don't need to worry about the fight. I know that you would win. And besides you don't need to train in using Mei's power, just let her take control. The goddess said with a smirk if Naruto lets Mei take control, he would look even hotter. He'll probably even dominate me. Kagi thought with a blush at her second thought. Alright I will. Naruto said with a smile. Time skip. Naruto's paw. It's been a week now, and I have changed. My body became more muscular, and I was able to use some of Mei's power, but over the time I did learn some rather interesting things from Mei. She told me how Kaguya wanted Mei to take control over my body, and see what would happen to my body. But that wasn't the only thing. She also told me how she and Kaguya could communicate through telepathic thoughts. She told how Kaguya wanted me to dominate her, and some other things. It kinda made me happy that she would actually want me to do things like that to her, but it also kinda made me a little uneasy around her because of that. Naruto-kun, wake up. I began to open my eyes slowly, and when they were able to open fully, I saw Kaguya on top of me. KK Kaguya WW what are why you doing I asked in a quiet but surprised tone, making Kaguya smile at me. What do you think I'm doing silly I'm waking you up. Kaguya said with a giggle making me blush. She looks so cute. And you're engaged to her. Oh hey Mei. Did you sleep well? Giggles I did. Hey Naruto, Kaguya-san, it's time for breakfast. Mikoto yelled, making me groan. Hey Kaguya can you get off of me now? I asked Kaguya to shake her head. I'm afraid I can't do that Naruto-kun. Kaguya said with a sly smile, confused, what do you mean? I asked in a confused tone if you want me to get off of you, you need to kiss me. Kaguya said with a sly smile, making me blush. I swear she's going to be the death of me. I nod at Kaguya, making her smile. I then sigh, and begin to move my head to her, as she does the same. Mini time skip. Naruto's paw. After finishing breakfast, everyone begins to look at me with a sad face which caught my attention. What's with the sad faces guys? I asked everyone, are you sure you want to do this? Are you strong enough to fight the twins? Mikoto asked with a sad tone I'm confident that I will be able to hold my own. I said, as I began to stand up and make my way to the door. My family then begins to follow my lead, and we make our way to the middle of the compound. As we were walking down the street I noticed that all the other Uchihas were giving me, and my family smiles, and shouting do your best. Or good luck. It made me happy that there were people like them in my life that actually cared other than my family. As we started to get closer to the middle of the compound, I saw that there were all the other clan heads, and heirs standing next to the fourth Hokage. Not only them, but the Chihas came too which made me happy. As we got there I saw that Menma and Naruko were wearing their same clothes, while I was wearing a different outfit. The outfit that I was wearing consisted of black t-shirt, with black anbu pants, and a black jacket that had the kanji for 10 that was in white. Alright now that the participants are here we may start the fight, but before we start does anyone have anything to say? Minato asked me to raise my hand. I do. I said, what do you have to say? Minato asked, making me turn to my father, dad, can I use them? I asked everyone curious about what I was asking, everyone then turned to Figaku, as he gave me a nod, making me smile. Alright I'm ready, carry on. I said, making Minato nod. Alright, here are the rules. Number 1. No killing. Number 2. No injuries that would stay permanent. And those are the rules, anyone that breaks the rules would have to forfeit the match. Is that understood? Naruko, Menma, and I nod, making Minato nod. Hey mate can you sing the song for me? Sure. 1. I wanna start by letting you know this. 2. Because of you, my life has a purpose. 3. You helped me be who I am today. Start. I then activate my Shuringen, making everyone's eyes white and even my family except Figaku since I told him. I see myself in every word you say. Sometimes it feels like nobody gets me. Trapped in a world where everyone hates me. There's so much that I'm going through. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. I then rushed at Menma at my top speed, making him look for me. By the time I reached him, I hit him in the face, making him stagger back. Naruko the rushes at me with a kunai in her hand, but before she could cut me with it, I dropped to the ground to swipe my feet under Naruko's making her fall down. I was broken. I was choking. I was lost. This song saved my life. I was bleeding. Stop believing. Could have died. This song saved my life. Menma then stands up, and takes out a kunai, and tries to cut me, which he succeeded in doing. I then jump back, and watch, as he halts Naruko up. I was down. I was drowning. But it came on just in time. This song saved my life. 
It then proceeded to get on all fours, and they started to go into a tailed beast state. They then rushed at me faster than what they were, but that wasn't enough. I then ran at them, and when I reached them I slid under them, and punched them both in the gut. Sometimes I feel like you've known me forever. You always know how to make me feel better. Because of you my dad, and me are so much closer. Than we used to be. I then hear the Ichiha shouting at me telling me to keep going, while the other clan had shouted the same, but to Naruko, and Menma. Not even one clan is on my side. You might escape when I'm stuck. In this small town. I turn you up. Whenever I feel down. You let me know like no one else. That it's okay be myself. What's the point? They don't care about me. No one does. Only the Ichihas. You're a demon. You're not one of yes. That's right a demon. I'm a demon. I need to accept that. I was broken. I was choking. I was lost. This song saved my life. I was bleeding. Stop believing. Could have died. This song saved my life. My eyes felt like they were on fire. I couldn't do anything they burned. I fell to my knees holding my eyes, making Nenma and Naruko stop, and making everyone go quiet. The Chihas knew what was happening. They knew what was happening to me. Sasuke went to go help me up, but he was stopped by Kaguya. What are you doing? He's in pain. Sasuke shouted, making Kaguya speak. If you get close to him you might die. She said, making everyone look towards her. What do you mean Kaguya-san? Mikoto asks, he's going into a tailed beast state. She said with a face with no emotion. I was down. I was drowning. But it came on just in time. This song saved my life. Pain, death, suffering. That's what makes a demon. I said, as I began to stand up, and let my hands fall to my sides. Everyone stared at me with fear. I then heard Minato say Manjiku Shuringen. My body then started to feel stronger, I then started to look at my hand, and saw that it was being covered in a dark purple substance which I assumed was my tailed beast. I then started to feel stronger by the second. I felt something wiggle on the back also so I looked behind me, and saw that there were ten tails. You'll never know. What it means to me. That I'm not alone. That I'll never have to be. I then looked at Menma and Naruko, and rushed at them again, and punched Menma into the ground, resulting in him losing consciousness. I was broken. I was choking. I was lost. This song saved my life. I was bleeding. Stop believing. Could have died. This song saved my life. I was down. I was drowning. But it came on just in time. This song saved my life. My life. My life. I then turned to Naruko, and put her in a hole which was made up of my time being tortured. Resulting in her screaming with tears. My life. My life. This song saved my life. Now Minato, it seems you and your wife have some papers to sign, don't you think? Naruto, where are you going? I said I'm going to go by train. Now leave me alone. I yelled at Kashina. Ever since I killed the demon brothers I've been bothered by Kashina. I don't understand why, all I did was kill them. As I left the house, and was starting to make my way to a nearby forest, I saw that this town was very poor. The stores barely have food, the adults are barely making money. But worse of all the kids. They're struggling, they don't have parents, nor do they have food. As I was walking I was stopped by a little girl. She looks so frail. I thought with pity. Excuse me mister. But do you have any food? The girl laughs with a tint of sadness. I gave her a smile, and bent down to her height. I then placed my hand on her head making her flinch. Don't worry I'm not going to hurt you. And here. I said, as I reached for my bag, and brought out my rations. I then give them to her, making her tear up, and hug me, making us both fall to the ground. Thank you so much mister. The girl said, making me smile, I then got up from the ground, and looked at her. You know, you remind me so much of my younger self. I said, making the girl look at me in confusion. What do you mean, mister? She asked me to look at her with a sad smile. I had the same childhood as you. Now let's not talk about that, I have a question for you. Would you mind answering it? I asked, making the girl nod. Why is this sound so poor? The girl soon gave me what I wanted to hear which made me grin evilly, but I hid it with a fake Gato smile. You're going to kill him? Yeah. But not before I help the people here. What are you going to do? You'll see. I see. Thank you, now if you'll excuse me I have something to go do. I said, making the girl nod, and run away. Now time to go. Mini time skip. Hey, what's that smell? A villager asks I don't know, but it smells good. Another villager asked. As everyone smelled what was going on they started to make their way to the middle of the town. When they got there they saw a sight they thought they didn't expect to see. What they saw was none other than me. Hey everyone. Listen up. I heard that ever since Gato took control you guys have been in trouble financially. And I can relate, and I know that I'm here on a mission to protect the bridge builder, but... I have an alternate mission now. And that is to rebuild the wave. I said with a big smile making everyone awestruck. Alright everyone please form a line. I said, as everyone started to form a line. 
After everyone formed a line I started to cut the boar and put the meat on the plates, making everyone smile. Mini time skip. As I was on the last person I was surprised on who it was. It was that same girl from earlier. Hey, how are you? I asked the girl to smile at me. I'm a good mister and thank you for doing this. She said as she gave me a bright smile making me do the same. You welcome little one. I said as I gave her a plate. After serving everyone I noticed that this once gloomy town is now a happy ball of sunshine. Was this what you were talking about Naruto? Yeah it was. You know if Kaguya was here she would reward you. What do you mean? You know what I mean N-A-A-R-U-T-O-E. Are you okay because I think you're going crazy because I don't know what you are talking about. You know Suni and O-U-G-H. So I'm just gonna go back. Mini time skip. Naruto where were you? Kakashi asked as he made everyone look at me in confusion. Wait, Narunai is gone. Naruko asked me to look at her like I always do when she pisses me off. Even now when you try to get me to come back you still forget me. And you even call yourself my sister, pathetic. I said as I look around and spot Tazuna on the couch watching TV while drinking. I then walk over into the living room and sit on the opposite side of Tazuna hey hiccups kid. Here hiccups try this. Tazuna said as he handed me his bottle of sake. Thanks. I said as I took a sip and as I did I heard Mei snickering but I just ignored it. To answer your question Kakashi, I was out training then I became a savior. I said, as I slouched back into the couch making everyone look at me confused except for Tazuna. A savior? Tsunami asked, making me look at her with a smile, go look outside. I said, as I went back to what I was doing. Before me, and Tazuna could get back to drinking we were interrupted with loud gasps from everyone making me smirk. Naruto, you did this Tsunami asked, making me look at her with an innocent smile. Yes I did. Before people had no hope that you guys were going to make it, but now look at everyone they have hope. This town was never lively, but now it is all because they have hope. I said, as I stood up from the couch, and walked over to the door where everyone was making them look at me. Everyone said that Gato was the reason that the town was like this, well if he did this, then he can undo it. I said, making everyone look at me confused, W what do you mean Naruto Kakashi tried to keep calm, but he couldn't. I'm going to kill Gato along with some of my friends. I said, as I made hand signals. Kuchi Snow Jutsu. Everyone was surprised when they heard and saw me perform dot. Standing in front of us was a tall woman around Kaguya's height. She had very long red crimson hair along with crimson eyes. She also had the same bus line like Kaguya I assume, but if not a little bigger. She was also accompanied by two other women. One of them was a little identical to me, but her hair was a white with a bit of black in it. She also had very light black eyes. The other women were the opposite of Kashina, she was the same height, the same length of hair, but the hair was white, she also had white eyes. To top it all off they all had fox-like eyes. Ha. Huh? Where are we? The vixen woman asked, as she looked around, she looked over everyone until her eyes landed on me, and when they did I swear I saw them sparkle. Nerikan. She screamed making everyone's eyes white in that she knows me, but also making everyone have a bead of sweat go down their forehead. She then runs to me, and tackles me to the floor, and hits my head onto the floor, and knocks me unconscious. Mini time skip. Onisama, why would you hurt Naruto-sama? I couldn't help myself, okay I haven't seen him in a long time. Onisama, Onisan, it was just an accident. Onisama just couldn't control her excitement, that's all. As I heard faint yelling I began to open my eyes a little, but not fully, afraid that I'm going to get blinded by the light. What's going on? Why does my head hurt? Well to put in a short version you got knocked unconscious, but you're fine with just a minor headache. Okay thanks me. Anytime, Naruto-kun. Might, as well get up. As I threw the blankets off of me, I started to make my way to the door, and when I did I could hear faint arguing. Sighing I just opened the door quietly, and when I did I closed back quietly, and walked down the hall, and down the steps, and when I got to the kitchen, I was greeted by all eyes on me, and people screaming my name. What's going on? Why is everyone yelling? I asked, as I began to make my way to the couch where Tazuna was. Naruto you have some explaining to do. Takashi said, making me look over to the other girls in the room. This is going to be fun. Didn't you figure it out? I asked, making everyone look at me in confusion, what do you mean Naruto? Sakura asked, making me look at her in surprise. Not adding Baka to my name that surprising, but to answer your question they are my sisters. I said, making everyone's eyes whiten. What do you mean Naruto? You only have two sisters. Kashina said, making me look towards her, they have my DNA. I said with a blank face he's not lying. After all, he did give me part of my DNA the vixen woman said, making everyone look at me like I was crazy. Naruto before you ask, no, we did not have sex. That's just her personality. I said, as I stood up, and walked over to where everyone was. Listen up everyone, let's start with introductions. This is Gumiho. Also known as the Nine-Tailed Fox, but she doesn't like being called that so just call her by her name if she allows you to. Heyo. This is Sumu. 
She is the sister of Kumiho, and she is also my opposite identical twin, as we like to say it. Greetings. And lastly, the second Kumiho reincarnation. None other than Alabama herself. If you get close or even hurt Narusama I will kill you. Well now that is over. Naruto we're not done. Kakashi said with authority in his voice, making the three vixens look at him like they were going to kill him. What do you mean we're not done? I did the introductions, what else is there? I asked in an innocent voice, making Kakashi raise his voice, Naruto, this is serious. This is not fun, and games where you use a high level summoning without us knowing, and to top it off you're hiding your skills, as a ninja. I'm not trying to sound aggressive to you Naruto, but this is serious. If you plan on killing Gato we're going to need to know your skills, as a ninja, so we can accurately plan out this mission, and we still have to deal with Zabuza. Takashi said, as I just nodded at what he said. Now. Where did you learn that, and what is a summon? What do you think of me? I honestly don't want you telling them, but if you want to be with Kaguya, and stay with your friends, then I suggest you only tell the ones you trust. Okay, thanks me. You're welcome Naruto-kun. Oh hey, make quick question. What is Naruto-kun? Since I was able to summon Kumiho does that mean I will be able to summon you? Yes, you can. All you have to do is think about me when you are about to use the dot. Okay thank you. Giggles you're welcome. Alright, I'll tell you. But only certain people. I said, making Kakashi and Kashina look at me. Nara Kashina was about to object, but I soon cut her off. The fewer people that know the better. I said, as Kakashi sighed alright Naruto who are these people then? Kakashi asked, as I closed my eyes. Kakashi, and Sasuke. Naruto I think that I show you're already on thin ice with me, so you shouldn't try to push your luck. I said, making Kashina flinch. Now let's take this outside, and talk about this. Alright. Kakashi said, as he stands up, and walks towards the door, and Sasuke does the same Kumiho, Sumu Alabama you guys want to come with. I asked, earning a nod from them. Mini time skip. Alright, Naruto we did what you asked of us now tell us. Sayoke okay, listen what I tell you stays between us. I said, making Kakashi nod. I'm the holder of the Jubi. The Jubi? Is that like another tailed beast or something? Sasuke asked, making me look at him, and nod, but I thought you were one of the nine tails. Sasuke asked, making me nod once again, but then I looked towards Kakashi. He probably already figured it out. Kakashi. You know don't you? I asked, getting a nod from him, and making Sasuke's eyes widen. Wait Kakashi knows. Sasuke asked in a surprised tone, making Haddock nod. Since when Kakashi have you been watching Naruto? Sasuke asked with a hint of anger in his voice. No, I wasn't Sasuke. But think about it, ever since Kaguya-san came, Naruto's power has been different along with his attitude towards his family. Kakashi said, earning a small smile, and a nod from me. He's right Sasuke, everything he said was right, well most of it at least, but still right. After saying that Sasuke calmed down a bit so you have the jubi what does that mean? Sasuke asked making me lean on the side of the house I, it means that I'm the strongest person in the world, along with the strength of the other tailed beasts. I said, making Kakashi, and Sasuke's eyes whiting why why you're stronger than the other Kakashi asked, making me nod once again. Well at my current level no, I might be only able to fight two tailed beasts, but that would probably be my limit. I said in a calm tone now onto the next part. The other girls in that room, as you heard their names one of them is the Kayubi which is correct, if you don't believe me I can have her show her tails, but she won't do it in front of other people, unless I tell her to because she says I only want you to see the Narukun, and besides, it's tradition to only show your lover your TAILS or so she says. Now you're probably thinking how I got her out well after I met Kaguya for the first time she gave me the Jubi, and replaced Kumiho, and with the Jubi being the mixture of all the other tailed beasts, I thought she just took her soul which I was wrong, I didn't find out until later, that Kumiho went back to living the way she was. Now enough rambling it's time to get on with what we're here for. The other two are my summons along with Kumiho, and they all come from the same contract. The demon contract. Thud. I guess they couldn't handle my awesomeness. I highly doubt that. That was rude me. What do you expect from Naruto-kun? I'm a demon. Can't argue with that. Sai I don't think they're going to get up anytime soon, I might as well take them inside. Time skip. Naruto's paw. Naruto K-U-N, wake you pee. W what are you doing? How did you get here, aren't you supposed to be in the village? I was but. I was so lonely, and I wanted Y-O-U. You wanted me? Yes Naruto-kun I want you so B-A-D. I want you to do it with me Naruto K-U-N. May what the fuck? Uzumaki-san wakes up. Tsunami said, as she began to wake me up which she succeeded in doing. Hey Tsunami-san can you give me a minute to get myself together? I asked for a nod from her, as she left the room. May that wasn't funny. It was pretty funny. I hate you. I love you too Naruto-kun. Sai Mei, where's my team? They let you sleep in, and went with the bridge builder to the bridge to finish it. Thanks. Mini time skip. 
After I changed my clothes I heard screaming so I walked down the stairs normally, and when I did I saw two men gathered around Tsunami which I assume is Gato's men. I then walked towards the sink, and get some water. You know it's rude to walk into someone's house. I said, as I put the cup in the sink, and looked back towards the two thugs. You got a death wish or something. One of them asked me to look towards him no. Not at all, I was just saying, but you do. I said making them get ready to attack. If you would leave I won't kill you. I said, as I began to take out a kunai, and they didn't leave, so I just ended up killing them. Hey Tsunami lock the doors, and stay away from the window, I'll leave a clone here to protect you, and Inari. I said, making her not in fear. Inari. Stay upstairs. I yelled, as I ran towards the bridge. Mini time skip. Kakashi's pov. We won't be able to survive this. Naruko and Menmar are barely holding their own against the Hunter Nin, Sakura is barely capable of fighting these guys, Sasuke is dead, and me and Kashina are busy with Zabuza. Where's Naruto when you need him? As Kashina rushed at Zabuza again with her sword and tried to hit him, he blocked the hit with his sword, and as soon as the swords hit there was a large surge of power. When we all felt the power we all stopped fighting and looked to where it was, and when we did we saw Naruto. Naruto's pov. Naranai. Naruto. As I teleported into the box of ice I was greeted with Naruko, and Menma all scratched up, and Sasuke dead. As I stared at his lifeless body I then began to feel my anger build up. I looked towards Naruko, and Menma Sasuke is dead, and you guys are alive. How does that work? I asked, as they looked down to the groan which pissed me off answer me. How does he look more beaten up than you two? I asked, as I still didn't get a response from them which said me past. You don't deserve to be a ninja. I said, as I looked towards the hunter nin. Did you kill my brother? I asked for a nod from the nin. I then lower my head, and let tears run down my face why. He was my brother. He was one of the only good things that happened in my life. Why did you take him from me? I asked, as more and more tears kept running down my face. He wanted to become a ninja. He knew what he signed up for. The nin said which made me look at him or her. That's right. I could be so dumb. Ninjas die in battle. I said, as I began to laugh which then turned to crying you're going to die. In the name of Sasuke Chiha I will avenge him. I said, as my body then began to be covered in purple chakra. I then started to get on all fours which resembled the posture of a fox. My body then was completely covered in the purple chakra. I then started to feel the chakra around my back change into the form of tails of three, which then turned to four when I felt a sharp pain. My skin then starts to peel off, and my blood starts to float out of my body covering the inside of the chakra, turning it to a black orb. The black orb then stay calm, and you'll be able to control it. What is that? Kakashi asked in a scared tone, as he looked at his student eyes T that Naruto. Sakura thought, as she looked in horror. As everyone looked at Naruto in fear due to his power, and how he looks, they felt that all they could do was watch. Sok Naruto screamed, as he began to grab his head, and drop to his knees in pain. He couldn't handle the loss of his brother. He had to accept the fact that he was now gone. You killed him. He did nothing wrong to you. So why? Naruto screamed, as he began to stand up from his knees, and get back into the stance of a fox. I want an answer. Naruto screamed, as he began to growl at the nin, making him or her shiver. I'm a tool. It was an order from Zabuza-sama. And his orders are absolute. They responded, as they began to bring up their left arm that has needles in between their fingers. I do not wish to fight you, but if your intentions are to harm Zabuza-sama in any way then I will have to put you down. The nin said, as they began to launch a series of needles at Naruto, which did successfully hit, but did not penetrate him due to his chakra skin. Naruto-kun you have two options right now. One kill them or two let them survive because in case you haven't noticed Sasuke is alive. Naruto turns around to look at Sasuke, and notices that all the needles were in his skin, but they were not fatal parts of his body. Naruto then turns back to the nin, and growls at them, then Naruto does a loud roar that shatters all the mirrors, forcing the nin out. Once the nin falls to the ground Naruto runs at the nin, but, as soon as the nin stands up Naruto rushes at them, and punches the nin dead square in the face, launching the nin all the way back to where Kakashi, Kashina, and Tsubuza are. As soon as the nin hits the ground Tsubuza starts to run towards the nin Haku. Tsubuza screams, as he finally reaches the nin, when he does he picks up the nin named Haku by the head, and lays him or her on his knee, and quickly takes off the mask, and when he does it reveals a young girl who looks to be around Naruto's age. Haku had blood running down her face from her lip, and she was starting to breathe heavily, and cough which made Tsubuza worry. Hey Haku come on stay strong. Haku hey look at me. Zabuza said, making Haku look towards Zabuza who was in tears, I'm sorry that you had to go through this, it's all my fault. Zabuza said, as he was in tears making Naruto stare at them, Haku seeing Zabuza like this made her smile. She was happy that he was finally showing some emotions which he didn't like to, but she was also worried that since she was going to die soon, which would probably make him go suicidal. 
Haku attempts to move her hand towards Zabuza's cheek which she couldn't, but Zabuza knew what she was trying to do so he grabbed her hand and put it on her cheek Zabuza Sama, please don't cry, I don't want you to cry Haku said, making Zabuza sniffle Haku before you die, I want you to know something. Zabuza said, making Haku listen carefully, I always thought of you as my daughter. Zabuza said, making Haku smile at him you too. I always thought of you as my father. Haku said, as she gave him a weak smile. Looks like it's my time. Goodbye Otu-san. Zabuza's eyes whitened, he never expected this to happen when Haku died. Haku. Zabuza screamed with tears running down his face making Naruto growl which got Zabuza's attention. He quickly turned around only to be met with the sight of Naruto right behind him, which made him jump and draw his sword. You. You killed her. Zabuza yelled as he swung his sword at Naruto, but Naruto just blocked it with his hand and dove it into the ground. Zabuza was now frightened, he had no way to defend himself, he was useless without his sword, and now he was going to die. He prepared himself by closing his eyes and taking a deep breath but, as he waited nothing happened, so he opened his eyes to see Naruto pointing at Haku's lifeless body. Zabuza was skeptical on why he was pointing at his daughter's body, but he was somewhat curious, so he nodded slowly, which made Naruto give him a growl. Naruto then walks like a fox, and when he reached Haku's body, he hesitantly moved his hand towards Haku's heart. When his hand touched where Haku's heart was, it began to glow purple which made everyone's eyes whiten. What's this? Zabuza what the hell is this? I thought I paid you to kill the bridge builder, and anyone who interferes a short man with glasses with men behind him, yelled which made everyone turn to him except Naruto, who was still doing whatever he was doing with Haku's body. What are you doing here? Zabuza asked in a surprised tone which made Gato smirk. Well I assumed that something like this was going to happen, so I thought I would clean up the mess you made, and tie up any loose ends. Gato said, making the thugs behind him crack their knuckles, and such. Men take care of him, and leave the women alive, they could be used for your own personal uses. Gato said, making every female ninja look at him with disgust. But, as soon as Gato gave the order, his thugs began to run towards everyone which made them get prepared for battle. Naruto's paw. May did it work. It did, good job. Thanks. Now let's go kill Dot. As I was done healing Haku I turned to Gato's men, and began to walk towards them, but I was soon stopped when Zabuza spoke to me. You healed her didn't you? Zabuza asked, making me give him a growl. I assumed that was a yes. He asked, as I gave him a little nod which made him give me a sad smile. Thanks I owe you. And I'm sorry for everything. He said, as I just gave him another growl. As the thugs got closer I began to growl even more, which made everyone besides Zabuza look at me with fear. Let's go. I rushed at the army of thugs at a fast speed that no one was able to keep up with, and when I reached them I began to slice them through the stomach with my claws, which made them spit out blood, and their bodies began to fall apart. With each strike I took the more blood, and the more bodies came. It was enjoyable to say the least, but this was going to top everything. As I cut the last thug down, I was left with only one more person to kill, but I wasn't going to kill him. He was. As I looked towards Zabuza I pointed at Gato who was starting to get away, but soon tripped. Thanks kid. Zabuza said, as he teleported to with the kunai. As soon as he teleported to I turned to Sasuke, and walked towards him, and I ignored Menma and Naruko, and when I reached Sasuke's body, I started to pull out the needles that was in his body, and when I finished I picked up his body, and began to walk to Kakashi, and while I was walking towards him, I started to transform back to the way I was before I went into tail beast state. Time skip. Naruto's paw. The trip back to the village was quiet to say the least, but it was peaceful. But, as we walked I kept overhearing Kakashi and Kashina talking about me. I didn't care that they were, it was just the fact that they didn't stop. Mini time skip. As we got to the gate I was met with the strongest bear hug. Naruto Khan you're alright. I missed you so much. Kaguya said, as she started to squeeze me tighter, and tighter Kaguya can't breathe. I said, as she giggled, and let go of me only to punch me in the head ouch. What the hell Kaguya? I yelled in pain, as I rubbed my head, Kaguya looked at me, and pouted you idiot. They told me everything. Kaguya yelled, as she blushed, and turned away, what was that pervert tell you? I yelled, making Kaguya turn to me with a surprised look. She's a pervert you're a pervert. You're the one having perverted dreams about me. Kaguya shouted, as she pointed at me. What? She was the one to come into my dreams, and impersonate, as you, and give me perverted thoughts. If anything she's the pervert. I yelled, making Kaguya look at me for a second before she turned around with her arms crossed. I believe you. She said, as she began to walk to the Hokage Tower. Come on, don't you guys have to go there anyway for your report? Kaguya asked, as she turned around, and faced me, and everyone else, we all gave her a nod, and began walking. Hey Sasuke, I have a question. Sakura said, making Sasuke respond. I swear if you ask me out no it's not that. Sakura said, making Sasuke listen along with Naruko, and Menma. Then what is it? Sasuke asked who is that woman that Naruto was talking to. 
Sakura asks Nenma and Naruko to listen closer. That's not my place to say. If you want to know either ask Naruto or Kaguya-san. Sasuke replied as he kept walking. Hey Kaguya is it just me or is everyone staring at me more than they used to? I asked making Kaguya look at them then to me. Now that you mention it, they are strange. Kaguya replied, making me sign. Their states are not of anger anymore, it's more of a fear stare. I said, making Kaguya nod. As we were talking we noticed that we had reached the Hokage's office. Kakashi then knocks on the door, and we all hear a faint come in, so Kakashi opens the door, and it reveals Minato with a very happy look. Welcome back Team 7. I hope that the mission went well. Minato asked, as he tried to keep his excitement yes Hokage-sama, the mission went somewhat smoothly, but we had some complications. Kakashi said, making Minato adopt a confused look. What do you mean Kakashi-kun? Minato asked, as he kept taking peeks at me, and Kaguya. Why is he taking peeks at me? How do you not know? What do you mean? Sai Kaguya has her chin on your head along with her breasts touching your back, and she has her arms wrapped around your chest. As I paid more attention I started to feel someone doing those things that Mei mentioned, so I looked at the person's hands, and saw that they're pale white. What the hell Kaguya? Geez calm down Naruto, it's not that big of a deal yet. Not that big of a deal. What do you mean Mei this is a huge deal? Not, as huge, as you, and her losing each other's V-I-R-G-I-N-I-T-Y. May I hate you? I know. Naruto, will you come here please? Minato asked to make me raise an eyebrow, but I didn't question, so I did, as he said. Now this is a direct order from the Hokage. I want to know who that woman is. Minato said with authority in his voice making me roll my eyes if it's an order I guess I don't have a choice. Well the woman standing before you is my fiancé, Kaguya Suzuki. I said, making everyone's eyes whiten except Sasuke's. Fiancé. But isn't she an adult? Minato asked, making me sigh. You didn't ask that in the order so I am not going to respond. Now is there anything else? I asked with a tint of annoyance in my voice making Minato sigh. He then takes out a black book and hands it to me. A bingo book. I asked making him nod. Look at the first page. Name. Naruto Uchiha. Other names. Bloody purple fox. Age 12. Recognizable traits. Blonde hair, blue eyes, three whiskers on each cheek. Current village. Village hidden in the leaves. Rank. SSS. Status. Genin. Chakra level. On par with Bijus. Ninjutsu. NA. Ninjutsu. NA. Tijutsu. NA. D ranks. 45. C ranks. 0. B ranks. 0. A rank. 1. S rank. 1. Elements. NA. Tijutsu. NA. Weapons. NA. Order. Do not engage at all cost, he is able to take on a whole army. Bounty. NA. Thanks for watching my video, and make sure to check out the author of this fanfic, link is in the description, see you next time, till then sayonara.